Hello everybody, today I'll be doing a presentation on the coffee culture in Middle Eastern countries through a case study on Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Yemen. I picked these countries because they are all known for their coffee and I was really interested in learning more about those specific countries. We can learn so much about cultures through their food. I want to know how culture is influenced by traditions pertaining to coffee in Middle Eastern countries. In the 13th century, a Sufi Muslim community in Arabia began drinking coffee to help people stay awake for lengthy prayer sessions. A Sufi monk from Yemen, Ali ibn Omar al-Shakili, brewed the first batch of what we know today as coffee. And I included a fun fact. Um, so, quad al-bun, which means wine of the bean. The Sufis introduced coffee to North Africa and the Middle East through trade. The rest of the world, however, did not begin drinking coffee until the middle of the 17th century. The English word for coffee is coffee and is derived from the Italian cafe, Turkish cave, and Arabic kwala. Some movements within Islam were against the consumption of coffee because it was not written in the Quran. In the 16th century, drinking coffee in Mecca's sacred mosque became very popular. Muslims were very instrumental in spreading the beverage throughout the Islamic world as the devout brought beans back from their pilgrimages to Mecca. Coffee gained popularity because it helped people fast during the day and stay awake during long prayer sessions at night during Ramadan. Coffee's properties make it a liquor substitute because religious practices in Muslim communities prohibit them from drinking. In 1554, the first coffee house opened in Constantinople. Coffee became intimately related to the growth of secular society. Merchants used coffee houses as marketing devices to gain new consumers within the beverage. Public coffee houses are known as cave cane. Coffee houses offer friends entertainment and hospitality without bringing them into the home, which was considered the private sphere. Coffee houses played an important role in entertainment, which was previously private and domestic. In the 16th century, religious conservatives burned coffee bags in the main square of Mecca in reaction to the growing popularity of coffee houses competing with mosques as social centers. Arabian coffee is called gawa and is traditionally served in small cups at social gatherings, special events, and weddings, and is consumed with fresh or preserved dates. Arabian coffee is served by either the host or the youngest person. The server pours each cup only one third away. It's very important. If the cup is filled too much, it indicates that the host wants the guests to leave and drink the coffee very quickly. The server must hold the Saudi coffee pot in their left hand and the cups are dispersed with the right. Using the left hand to deliver an item is considered bad manners. The guest of honor, a highest ranking person, is usually served first. The consumption of coffee was so popular that it is highly accepted in modern day Saudi Arabian culture. The Turkish word for breakfast is kalvati, which means before coffee. Turkish coffee is prepared by simmering a fine powder of ground coffee beans. Um, so I have some Turkish coffee that I got from home. There's a Turkish coffee store near my yoga place. Um, so I got that there. So I have a little demo. Okay, so this is called a sesame, and this is where you put the coffee beans into. So first you're gonna add water, then the coffee grounds and sugar if you want it. You're gonna simmer over low heat. And in the top of the coffee, um, there's gonna be a little foam and you're gonna pour the foam out, just the foam, into the cups before returning back to heat. So you pour the foam out, and then you return this back to heat, and then you pour the coffee out. And you are not allowed to stir it more than once because the grounds are very special. So Turkish coffee smells different than regular American coffee, so I'm gonna pass it around if everyone wants to smell it.
It smells very good. <laughs> it smells very good. Yes, very good. Okay. Um, so traditionally, before getting married, the groom's parents must visit the bride's family for a cup of coffee. According to superstition, the grounds that remain in that cup are used to predict the couple's future. Um, so here is what it kind of looks like when you finish your coffee. This is what the ground should look like. Um, so the coffee reader tilts the cup forward and they look at the horizontal halves of the cup. In the bottom half, the symbols are supposed to relate to the past and the top half of the cup is supposed to show the future. So there's much that can be seen through the coffee grounds. And across all cultures, a lot of people like to predict the future through the coffee grounds, but it originated in Turkish culture. Um, so Yemenite Sufi Muslims first drank coffee in the 14th century because they wanted to remain awake for their long nighttime chanting prayer rituals. Um, for two and a half centuries, Yemen held a virtual world monopoly on coffee production. The light colored beans were the source of the word mocha, which, re which referred to the port city of Mocha on the Yemeni coast. The city became a major trade center for the mocha style of coffee bean, which is known for creamy and sweet flavorings. Um, this is what it looks like. So you see the port city of Mocha is right here, which is ideal for trade. Like you can go in right here and that's the port. And it also shows Yemen is right next to Saudi Arabia, so a lot of traditions were interspersed. Um, also, fun fact, um, Marco Polo purchased coffee beans and mocha during his voyages, which is really cool. So um, when introduced the project to Dr. Rogers, she suggested I read this book. Highly recommend, it's amazing. My grandmother also read it. Very good book, and it's a true story, which is also very cool. Um, so Mokhtar Alkanjahi is a Yemeni American man, and he desired to export coffee from Yemen into San Francisco. And while he was in Yemen, the Yemeni branch of Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, initiated numerous attacks within the country, making Mokhtar's trip far from easy. Mokhtar eventually makes it out of the country safely, and his dreams of bringing Yemeni coffee into America were eventually achieved when Porta Mocha coffee became sold around the United States in June 2016. Um, by July 2017, the coffee bean available around the globe and can now be bought on Amazon Prime, which is really cool. Um, so this is what his packaging looks like. This is the book. Um, and then the coffee beans that are typical, typical of mocha the port of mocha are reddish in color. You can see kind of here, and that's really cool. Um, so all coffee beans are that type of color. Um, so coffee was seen as type of a social drug, um, and it's one of the most widely consumed beverages and most internationally traded commodity. With caffeine as the world's most popular drug. On um, the social nature of meaning for a cup of coffee is popular throughout the world as coffee brings people together. Um, so here I have like a cup that says different words for coffee throughout different languages. Um, and then this is kind of play on words. It's a prescription bottle of coffee. I thought it was funny. Okay, so finally, um, the Middle East and South Asia were the world's most principal coffee drinking areas into the middle of the 18th century. Since then, coffee has spread all over the world as a large component of social life. Um, so thank you for listening to my presentation about coffee. Hope you enjoyed. Um, bye everybody.